A lot of people want to seem smart, and it's a it's kind of the easy route to just like look at memes that describe something to you. It's a super easy way for you to feel like you fast track intelligence. I'm saying it. Speaking of people who are confident and sometimes confidently incorrect, Joseph Robinette Rogan. Folks, it's been a long time since I watched the Joe Rogan video on this broadcast. I feel like he's fallen off a little bit. Like he's so hyper invested in COVID stuff. He rarely ever has like cool people on. He did have Stavi baby on recently. We're just going to hit the Joe Rogan thing raw. No cute girl in the studio. None of that. Just hitting it raw. Just you and me, baby. You on the other side of that screen, whether you're on a laptop, on your phone, as you're delivering Amazon packages across the neighborhood and just me. We're watching this shit. Joe Rogan apparently had a little flub and was fact-checked again in real time by Mr. Jamie. Well, you know, there's people that voted for Biden that are doing it now. They're, yeah. They're like, I, what did I do? Right. Like, what did I choose? Like, I, how is this guy? Yeah, you just can't listen to an interview or he's saying some of the stuff he said. Bro, this dude has literally a video game character from 2007 haircut. Like his, I don't know if it's the low pixelation. I don't know what's going on. This is unironically Max Payne 1, okay? My dude's got the Max Payne 1 haircut. What the fuck? How does it stay like that? How does it stay like that? There's, I feel like his hair is more powerful than the headphones. Like, you know how people go, ha ha, you have a head dent, right? Like, oh, you took your fucking headset off and you're like oh your hair and you're in the top of your dome it's got a dent it's like no this dude literally breaks the fucking headset with his hair i don't know how he did it but congratulations it says it just makes no sense at all it's like you, you can't listen to those interviews and feel like you made a good decision i, I don't know how you did could. you hear what he said like yesterday or a couple of days ago mm -mm. he said he's talking about the revolutionary war he's like one of the reasons why we lost the revolutionary war one of the problems with the Revolutionary War was they didn't have enough airports. So this is an interesting start to the conversation because there are a tremendous number of Biden flubs and gaffes and goofs that you could point to because my man is a gaff machine. My man was a gaff machine even when he was all there, right? Great retail politician, gaff machine across the board. There's never been a moment in Joe Brandon's career where he hasn't like said some silly shit. And also a serial liar and plagiarizer, right? That's kind of his thing. That's always been his shtick. If you track Joe, uh, Joe Biden's career, you would recognize that he's always popped off with like plagiarism and also uh, embellishing his past in a way that is not dissimilar to George Santos in many ways. But recently, of course, he has, you know, he, he doesn't have the mental acuity that he used to have he doesn't have the mental fortitude he's he's not all there right in, a, in the way that you as long as you know when you get older in the way that you see your grandparents kind of start to start to not have the same light behind the eyes so so there's plenty of moments that you can point to with respect to mr robinette brandon except joseph robinette rogan posted something weird so let's take a look yeah. at what happens here <laughs> Have you seen that? I saw that. <laughs> it's like, what that? The like, pull him. <laughs> it's if, crazy. If, if you were, if you had any other job and you were talking like that, yeah. they would go, hey, you're done. A few moments later. The same stable genius that said the biggest problem we had in the Revolutionary War is we didn't have enough airport. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> So yeah, that's it. Whoa. Right. Just, <laughs> what? Just for, for the record. Is that fake? It's not fake, but he was referencing Trump saying that. Here's what Trump's saying it in 2019. Oh. Donald Trump said something about that, and he didn't say G. G okay, so here's one thing that I find to be a massive mistake for the Biden campaign. Talking about Trump's mental, mental fortitude. Now, I know there's a lot of Democratic Party... Uh, dick writers in the chat who will unconditionally support the Democratic Party no matter what, and they will say things like, you know, Joe Biden is actually all there. This is a moment 
where Joe Rogan fucked up. But I have a different perspective on this. But I do love Joe Rogan fucking up like this and having Jamie live fact. Jesus, he said a stable genius, and that's where the, oh. the transcription... Let me hear what it says. What did he say? <clears throat> In June of 1775, the Continental Congress created a unified army out of the revolutionary forces encamped around Boston and New York and named after the great George Washington commander-in-chief. The Continental Army suffered a bitter winter of Valley Forge, found glory across the waters of the Delaware, and seized victory from Cornwallis of Yorktown. Our army manned the airport. It ran the ramparts. It took over the airports. It did everything it had to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? Yo! <laughs> Oh, the Revolutionary Army. So he fucked up. <laughs> yeah, he did. But I feel like <laughs> that's it, it, just, you can yeah. tell, too, it sounds like a little different. He's like, you can tell he like messed up his words, but yeah. yeah he was just, oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, never mind. Okay. Got it. I don't know. To go over the airport. <laughs> well, that's, oh, come on, guys. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can say Trump says some dumb shit, too. What the fuck? It's that's about, crazy. That's the thing about media these days. It's like. Right. Oh, yeah, it's a much larger problem with media. Bitch, where are you at? You're at the Joe Rogan experience. You are well, literally the media doing the wrong thing. Okay, so um, what I was going to say about this piece is that there's a couple different things. First of all, you know what my perspective is, right? I do think that, uh, I, what, do I, what do I always say? I say Donald Trump is delusional, but he's not demented, right? Whereas... Joe Biden, on the other hand, comes across like he doesn't have the mental fortitude that he once had, but at least like the the team holding it together demonstrates a level of stability. Now, that stability is still bad overall, like what you've seen uh, during this saga of the Israeli ethnic cleansing of Gaza, right? That doesn't mean it's good policy, but it is actually stable. It is real stability and it's not brandon himself doing this stability it's the people around him right so that's something to consider trump has always done stuff like this he's always he gets shit wrong all the time but if you put trump and joe biden side by side toe to toe in a motherfucking jail cell where they're going for 30 minutes without any scripting without any prompters yeah i think trump is absolutely going to look like he is cognitively better than joe biden okay what's really sad is that those are the two options in the united states of america in front of us okay we have 800 year old joe biden who definitely is showing his age and then you have like 799 year old donald trump who will be older than joe biden was when he ran for president and won right this time around with definitely seemingly better mental acuity however is a fucking delusional despotic psychopath who keeps getting worse and worse with his rhetoric this time around the real argument is not 99 percent hitler versus 100 percent hitler it's 99 percent demented versus 100 percent demented <laughs> or both why not both if you look at the stats, one is like 100% demented, one is 99% demented. If you look at the other stats, one is 100% Hitler, the other is 99% Hitler. It's great. It's great stuff overall. Wonderful that this is like the number one country. You know, we're the, we're the wealthiest nation on earth. We are the dominating force. We are the, the oh, hegemonic superpower keeping this entire thing going. Certainly doesn't spell doom and gloom for the rest of the world and for ourselves. Regardless, no, right in Joe San George Santos, yeah. Joe Biden is too old to be an effective president. Yeah, this is like, this is the classic uh, conundrum. At age 78, when he took office in 2001, uh, 2021, Joe Biden was too old to be an effective president. Donald Trump will make an excellent president when he takes office at age 78 in 2025. Exactly. I, I mean, I just mentioned that, right? Like, it's a race to the bottom in the worst ways possible. Donald Trump will be the same age, I think older, as a matter of fact, than 
Joe Biden was by a little bit when he ran and became the president. Anyway, why not both is literally what happened in German politics after the war where we simply let multiple parties govern. If the numbers give uh, no one a majority, USA should try that once to unify the country. <laughs> yeah. Okay. One is doing Hitler. One is saying Hitler, you know, in a poetic way. They compete. They complete each other. No, the, the Chuck Schumer retort to Donald Trump being like, immigrants are poisoning the blood of Americans is the perfect demonstration of how the two-party structure creates the ratcheting effect that makes us basically either crawl or sprint towards full tilt fascism. One side is literally going, no, 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 we are actually fascist and we're so fascist that I'm just basically plagiarizing Hitler. The other side goes, oh my God, that guy's plagiarizing Hitler, except, you know, what he's saying is true. He just shouldn't say it like that. And that to me is insane. I feel like whenever... In the past 10 years of my coverage of American politics, I felt like I have kept repeating the same points over and over again, reiterating it over and over again with different cycles of like other people getting on board with what I have to say and recognizing that reality and then forgetting all about it every four years when MSNBC and CNN decides that, uh, you know, Democrats are going to maintain stability or some shit, right? People forget that. And it's like, it is, it is at the heart of my criticism of the Democratic Party because I criticize the Democratic Party for being too close to the Republican Party in politics. This does not mean I like the Republican Party. I like the Republican Party less than I like the Democratic Party, obviously. Okay? So, definitely very... Oh, fuck. Definitely very sad state of affairs. And uh, it, it not great. People agree with us on until porn is brought up. Oh my God, don't bring back the sex work conversation again. But yeah, as far as the Joe Rogan thing goes, yeah, he got owned, right? He got owned and that's great. That's fun to watch. And uh, it's a really, it's a really revelatory, it's a really revealing moment. It's a really revealing moment where you, you look at the situation, he recognizes what's going on. And then he still is, like, kind of trying to defend the principles, right? For me, revelatory is correct, actually. I know, but there's no reason to say revelatory. You could say revealing. It's easier. Um, for me, it doesn't make sense on numerous issues. If I'm Joe Biden, I'm probably not trying to... If I'm Joe Biden or if I'm on Joe Biden's team, I'm probably not trying to talk about mental acuity at all across the board. I'm certainly not trying to lap Trump on that. Because politics are very simple in many instances. And the way that people recognize you, there's a lot of feelings involved. There's a lot of just like not really thinking about things clearly and logically. It's mostly team sports. You either vote for Democrat because you're a Democrat, you feel Democrat, or you vote for Republican because your parents did and you feel a Republican, yada, 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 right? And then beyond it, it's a lot of, there's a lot of vibes at play. And when you look at the vibes of the situation, and when you look at it and you analyze like the Biden, uh, the, the vibes that Biden is putting out there and the things that Biden is saying and the way that he performs, uh, especially when he is unscripted for a very long period of time, when he has to respond to questions, right? When he has to sit there and respond to questions, when he's like off the cuff, it looks very sad. It's very rough, and that is part of the reason why 75% of the Democratic Party did not want him to run again. I don't know if those numbers have changed recently. I'm sure that, like, inevitably a lot of Democrats are going to fall in line, but that still leaves a lot of people who would have voted for the Democratic Party who just don't feel enthusiastic enough to vote for the Democratic Party, okay? And that's a big flub. That's a big mistake. And one that we should be very familiar with, with the Democratic Party at this point, it's kind of their modus operandi. We did this with Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton, and pushing for Hillary Clinton as the, the, the candidate for the Democratic Party was a major mistake. Being incredibly confident about her chances destroying Donald Trump was a major mistake, right? 
Many voters would be motivated to vote against Trump. Nikki Haley would easily beat Biden, though. I don't know. I don't know if that's the case. I mean, Nikki Haley would, I, in my opinion, have a pretty solid shot here. But it, but Nikki Haley can't get it out. Nikki Haley can't get out of the the Republican Party's primaries. This is something I've brought up a bunch. The Republican Party's incredibly aggressive, incredibly reactionary, far right base of support is the base that votes in the primaries. But that base, and if you feed into that base, is going to make you nasty and icky and and not exactly uh, uh, likable to a broader audience, the, the general voter uh, population, is going to look at that and go, ugh, that's too, too much instability for me. I remember the Trump administration. I remember the Trump years. I don't like that. I don't want to be a part of that. Okay? So, also, the Dem strategy is supposed to be business as usual, but that doesn't land when your incumbent candidate for that is barely held together on a good day. Biden is the little personification of the Dems' crumbling strategy. It's really interesting to think about this because... If I were to make an honest assessment, remove Biden from the equation, look at the Democratic Party's operations this time around, um, the the last couple of like very far right things that they've done, like uh, signaling to the crowd that they're going to be even more reactionary and more white nativist on immigration policy, uh, beyond uh, with the, with those exceptions, overall on like trade protectionist policies or when. Uh, you know, trying to improve manufacturing output in this country. Like the, the Biden administration is, has taken a lot of steps in the positive direction. Obviously, the bar is like way below the ground. It's, it's beneath the ground. But I haven't mixed my words on this. I've said uh, allowing the NLRB to operate in the way that it has so far has been has made the Biden administration literally more pro-labor than the Obama administration, like objectively, demonstrably. Right. The Inflation Reduction Act had some pretty solid provisions in it. You have manufacturing. Uh, you have uh, uh, opened up a bunch of factories in different parts of the country. These are going to have very positive. Imp uh, these are going to have very positive effects on the American economy in the next five to ten years. So there is there's a lot going on. You also have the antitrust uh, working uh, uh, on the other side as well. Don't know how uh, positive that's going to be. I don't know if they will rein in Lena Khan in the next administration or not. But overall, there are some good things that the Biden administration is that has uh, the Biden administration has done. But the problem is the figurehead for these policies is seen as like an old, a doddering old fool, and that's not good. Minced words, babe, not mixed, sorry. Minced words. Uh, so it is what it is. I, I don't know. I think, I think the way I look at it, the Biden administration is going to be seen as an administration full of chaos, like years later down the line. We will not remember the good gains made on any front. And we will remember him as, and I'm not saying that this is a correct way to approach him, but many people I think will remember him as the guy who, one, genuinely facilitated the ethnic cleansing in Gaza, which continued the Trump era policies uh, of the Abraham Accords and moving the embassy to Jerusalem and all of that. The guy who also got us into a proxy war with Russia. Once again, this is also Russia's failure and Russia's doing, certainly, right? But th this is the way that people are going to perceive him, in my opinion. If I'm to remove myself from, like, immediately uh, uh, looking at this uh, situation and just, like, pull myself out of it and, and try to think about what people will remember, they're going to think pulling out of Afghanistan was a positive thing. I think that years later... Years down the line, I think people are going to probably look at pulling out of Afghanistan as a positive thing. They'll say, that was good, and then what came after is very, very bad, right? Because people don't necessarily look at the situation uh, and, and uh, analyze the situation in front of them uh, adequately, okay? But his administration is the one where, his administration is certainly the one where, you know, uh, the the... Uh, the war in Ukraine happened, and that will be presented as one that is America's fault because America does involve itself in everything happening at the global stage, okay? His administration will be remembered with uh, Israel's actions in 
Gaza and and allowing that to continue in the way that it did in the way that it has his administration unfortunately will be remembered as like the old man trying to steer the ship and and failing to do so effectively i don't personally believe that there's a singular guy out there who controls uh the government i don't especially uh, not in a situation where you have uh, Joe Biden being brought out of a fucking vat every uh, every day to deliver two and a half hours of like, you know, media uh, pre- press junkets or whatever. I don't think he's like actually uh, steering the ship regardless, but that is how people will remember him. Uh, the other thing, of course, is that uh, Roe v. Wade was uh, destroyed under his reign. That's another thing that people will bring up. I don't know. It's just, it's sad because I feel like a more charismatic, younger, more dynamic leader uh, uh, that didn't make some major mistakes uh, with respect to America's foreign policy, for example, would very likely look like a really positive figure that was able to change America's course, change America's trajectory. Because there are good things that his administration did, like I said, right? It's very weird. But I guess that's perfect for Joe Biden, who has spent his entire political career trying to triangulate the median voter, to the median voter trying to always be dead center on issues from the Democratic Party. And that's precisely what has happened. And of course... It means that he is, due to the material conditions and what those conditions demand from the adults in the room, like what kind of economic stability measures have to be put in place, that is going to make whoever is steering this ship look like they are more progressive, prior administrations, but at the same time, there's a lot of stuff that that Biden is just like incredibly fucking reactionary on, especially when we are talking about a country that has gotten way more right-wing over the course of the past 30, 40 years. I like how charitable you are, even with this ghouls, man. Thank you. I mean, yeah. I feel like people would have viewed Roe v. Wade better if Biden tried to fight it on the courts instead of being like, oh, well, I don't want to politicize the court. I think a court battle should have been fought. Court packing should have been something to like at least uh, uh, implement or try to implement. And uh, those who say cinema and mansion fucked Biden over don't understand how inside baseball is played, right? I'm sorry, chatters, but I know that I have a lot of uh, pie in the sky ideas and and I'm an idealist. And sometimes that come across that sometimes people like to say, oh, what you want to happen is what you uh, are, are saying can happen immediately. That's not what I'm saying at all. There's Two different kinds of analysis that I engage in all the time. One is what I think should happen because it's good. And one is what I think the Democrats could be doing that they're not doing. Not only because it would be good for the future of the country, but it would be good politics. I talk about politics and policy all the time. Republicans have bad policy, but very good politics. They love playing politics. Democrats, on the other hand, are supposed to have good policies. You know, they at least advocate for good policies when they're not in a position of power. But they have horrible politics. They do horrible politics. Just awful politics in general. So when I'm talking about the Democratic, uh, when I'm talking about the Democratic Party, when I put my electoral uh, Andy, electoralist Andy hat on, I am actually criticizing the Democratic Party as a Democratic voter. Okay? Very different than, uh, than, than, my what I think is like the moral thing for the Democratic Party to do the the courage to demonstrate moral leadership to, to do the right thing even if it might be perceived as unpopular in the short term and as far as Mansion and Cinema goes even without their uh, even without considering their political positions here is why it was a major failure people hate gridlocked Senate. People hate gridlocked Congress, okay? They hate it more than anything else. I can tell you after years and years of covering this stuff with with 99% certainty that it doesn't matter how bad a fucking bill is, okay? 
if you pass it fast, if you pass it swiftly, you will not expend a lot of political capital for passing it. Obviously, if the bill's impact or the changes made uh, ruin people's lives in, in, in ways that they can experience, that's a little different. Roe v. Wade, uh, the destruction of Roe v. Wade and the protections that it offered to women is a perfect example of like, yeah, if you pass that or if you change that, uh, Americans' lives are going to be materially harmed immediately and they will know that you are at fault for it, you are responsible for it. But as far as like tax cuts, for example, tax cuts on the wealthy and the entire American population, that was passed expeditiously under the Trump administration and people did not, People, people did not have the time to even, like, gather their opinions on it. And in comparison to how much uh, political capital was expended to pass that, right? In comparison to how much political capital was expended to pass those tax cuts, if you compare that to something that is objectively good, like Obamacare, and how long that process took, you come to the recognition that people care almost less about like the actual benefits that they got from it or the actual damages that it contributed to and more about how long it took to pass something, right? Yeah, we should sure for sure let the government take more of our money. They always use it wisely. Don't worry, Bone Doc. You're going to get your fucking taxes uh, automatically increased again because you're not a part of the top 1%. That's right. 2025, baby. You're going to be paying more in taxes next year when your fucking tax cuts get sunsetted, you know whose tax cuts are not getting sunsetted and, and, and are, are, are unironically permanent, made permanent by the Trump taxes I was talking about? Mine, jackass. You don't know what's good for you, dog. You just think about it from the perspective of like, oh man, the government's stealing my money. It's just like an incredibly reactionary opinion. Oh my God. Anyway, so what about other tax for people like the people who have to watch the ad break at the top of the hour? Fuck you. God damn it. That's like such a weak ass debate that I got clapped with. At the top of the hour, there is a little bit of a Obamacare style situation in the form of a three minute ad break. It doesn't give you care. It doesn't help you at all. And it's broadly viewed as unpopular. So it's not like Obamacare at all, which at least had some very decent provisions in it, like uh, the pre existing condition uh, mandated coverage. Okay. Anyway, the three minute ad break is upon us. It's a bit like Obamacare if you get gifted a sub. If you're lucky, here's a three-minute ad break now. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, the last thing I wanted to say about the, the, the Joe Rogan saga is that he fucked up 34 MKD50 with another 50 big ones. Holy moly, we're back. We're so back, boys. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention uh, about Joe Brandon versus Donald Trump is that I would stay away I would stay away from talking about mental acuity and cognitive functionality if I was on the Brandon camp. I would simply try to show, you know, that Brandon still got it. Pump him full of drugs, whatever. Meth surfy. Give him some meth surfy. Thank you for the five get the subs. I don't know what that means. And and try to make it seem like Joe Brandon is actually still kicking. All right. But that is a major problem for Joe. That's a major, major problem for Joe that he looks fucking real bad on camera. And it's not just like TikToks fucking showing that he's slipping, okay? A lot of people love placing the emphasis on TikTok. They're like, oh, why are the youth anti-Israel and pro-Palestine? It must be TikToks. It's like it, TikTok is not doing what you think it's doing, okay? Unless you are openly stating that like the complete media control of a narrative is what should be the reality is what was the reality and tiktok is kind of breaking through that which is why uh you know uh, people have a different perspective in which case there is truth to it there is definitely truth to that tiktok has a lot of bad there's a lot of conspiracies a lot of silly nonsense but tiktok also does constantly fucking show things to you that you are not going to get in traditional legacy publishers in mainstream media right? Every now and then the New York Times will write an article about Biden's lost his step, but ultimately they know not, they know not to cover that sort of thing. Same with fucking Israel, Palestine, mainstream media very rarely and very reluctantly covers the, the impact of the Israeli campaign of ethnic cleansing in Gaza. 
it it has taken them 78, 80 fucking days to finally get to the point where like they're like, yeah, these Palestinians are being slaughtered and it's kind of ruthless. It's just kind of fucked up, actually. You know, it's taken them 20,000 deaths, more than 10,000 children being murdered ruthlessly by the Israeli rockets that we give them, by the Israeli missiles, by the Israeli artillery that we give them. And only now is the media basically saying like, yeah, maybe we should dial this back a little bit. And now you're also seeing like the State Department backed Democrats actually outflank Joe Biden on this issue because they are recognizing that like, okay, this has become untenable. This has become unmanageable. This is actually making, uh, uh, you know, this is actually making the, the uh, Biden administration in America look bad, right? This being an election year upcoming is a double-edged sword. I just think that there was definitely a much better... There's definitely a much better way to manage uh, the the uh, situation than the way that Biden managed and the way that Anthony Blinken is managing it. And and uh, there's more reports on what Israel is doing and people see dead children plastered in the media, in major media, and they see Biden both simultaneously saying, don't kill civilians, Jack, but also, uh, also saying Israel is doing the right thing and Israel has to exist in the way that it does and has to be violent or whatever. Biden is basically backing himself into an unmanageable corner. So, going back to the Joseph Robinette Rogan moment. Yeah, Joe, they're pissing off the voters to get votes for people who can't vote here. 1255. Yeah. You, have you, did you see that video? There was a video that was going around today of uh, people in Chicago that are furious that the government is giving so much money to uh, all these immigrants that are, have illegally migrated into Chicago. No, I didn't see that. that they're giving them cell phone and 1200 yeah, yeah, bucks, yeah. whatever it is. And yeah. these people are fucking freaking out. Yeah. And, you know, these people that were Democrats are like, yeah. hey, if Trump wants to talk to us, come talk to us. Like, <laughs> yeah, we're we're yeah, tired yeah, of this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, wow, this, yeah. is, this is wild to see. And these people are waking up. Like, why are you giving people that aren't even from here all this money and a free phone and all this shit? You're not giving anything to us? I, and that, I mean, yeah, that is fucked. It's, it's like, fuck. I think. Those people deserve, but that's what it's like. We're seeing that's like, why aren't regular people getting that same shit? Why doesn't everybody just get that? Why are the fucking why is that person getting special treatment where it's like, we're just fucked? I mean, well, that's the sh again, the safety net. They shit. shouldn't get it either. What they're doing is they're trying to buy votes. That's I what see, I think I they're see, doing. I see, I see, I I try, they're trying to get rid of voter ID and they're trying to bring people in or well, allow those... people to get in and make it easy for them to travel all around the country. And if, if someone like let you in the country, wouldn't you vote for them? But they can't vote, can they? Well, what if they can? It's a, I what mean, do you mean, what if they can? But they can't. It's so stupid. You said they buy vote from a group of individuals who literally cannot vote. God, Republican commentary is so idiotic, man. It's so fucking stupid. It's so dumb. I can't believe we feed people who are in prison. Damn, Dems buying votes. Joe Rogan isn't a Republican. Learn your facts. Joe Rogan isn't a Republican law. That's the funniest part about this argument is that Joe Rogan has openly said that Ron DeSantis is, like, very good, okay, and much better as a politician than anyone else. I don't know what the deep shame people feel about, like, who they want to vote for and, and what they believe in, okay? I openly say, like, I vote for the Democratic Party, okay? I'm not a Democrat. I don't like the Democratic Party. I regularly criticize the Democratic Party. But having said that, I vote for the Democratic Party, okay? That's it. It's, le it's the lesser evil voting. That's what gets me every fucking time. Having said that, I'll still use my voice and my community to try to get the Democratic Party to do, uh, to, to do things that are objectively good. He's just against the deep state and realizes how fucking corrupt everyone is. No, he's not, brother. You are not against the deep state if you're fucking pro-Ron DeSantis. The fuck do you mean? And... If you're pro-Donald Trump, you're not against the deep state either. Donald Trump is not an anti-deep stater. He was literally the fucking president. Shut up. It's so stupid. It's so incredibly stupid. He's not pro-Ron DeSantis. He can say he has some good policies. Yeah, good policies like what? Fucking banning books in school? Like fucking owning trans students or whatever? These are all reactionary Republican agenda items. If you like them, you are most likely a fucking Republican. Not locking the entire state down during fake or COVID. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, that's right. Not locking the state down during fake COVID is actually the deep state. Except the same capitalist enterprises that wanted the fucking states to be open were also playing a pivotal role in the CDC 
rolling back some of those restrictions that they were posing uh, at the tail end once the vaccines were out and rolled out. So I don't know what you're talking about when you say the deep state, okay? The draconian policies weren't keeping your ass at home and fucking giving you money, dumbass. The draconian policies were saying, yeah, keep going to work, actually, and you no longer even get a day off when you actually get fucking sick. It doesn't even matter if you get other people sick. Now you're going to, oh, yes, let's give everybody money. How'd that work? Record inflation. First of all, okay, that's Donald Trump. So you're, you're, you know, you're all over the place with your politics, I guess. And secondly, if you didn't give people money to stay at home, people would have just simply died, okay? And not only would have people died, but the global consumption engine would have fallen apart, absolutely eviscerating the global economy. So you had to give people money regardless, okay? That's two. Everyone says shut down and give free money, all the Democrats. So you're saying Donald Trump was a cuck and gave people free money because he was listening and capitulating to the Democratic Party. No one can work. Everyone has to sit in their house and be scared of our only savior was the vaccine. Okay, you're all over the place with your arguments because I didn't like the shutdowns, okay? But I understood, especially before the vaccine, that it was an absolute necessity, okay? Rolling back commerce to a certain degree was an absolute fucking necessity for the safety of individuals. We still fucked up. There are plenty of places that did not shut down at all, and they suffered a tremendous amount of losses. Okay. Now, having said that, however, having said that, however, once the vaccines were rolled out, big time fucking advocate for that shit, it was great. It was awesome. I was immediately out and about. And uh, the unfortunate reality is that many people still refuse to get the vaccines. We still didn't take the necessary precautions when we were traveling and COVID still kept popping off. You think you can actually change the dumb fuck's mind? No, but I think it's good that I'm actually responding to his stupid fucking takes. Because it gives people the ammunition to deal with their relatives, especially during the holiday season when they have to deal with their dumbass relatives whose brains have been broken irreparably by COVID. And they will never actually recover from that and have become like insanely conspiratorial weirdos. Okay, vaccines are found to be biased results from big pharma. Now we have lagging test scores, school education record, schools education record inflation. Okay, a couple things here. One, lagging test scores. Brother, the American education has been dog water for the past multiple decades. As a direct consequence, at least if you compare it to, uh, on the global stage, other countries that actually do have decent, adequate, as a matter of fact, very good public education, there's a real reason for why America's education has always been an an abject failure. It predates COVID, and COVID simply made things worse. Okay? Okay. So that's number one. Number two, when you talk about like schools, education, record inflation, you're just like, you're just pointing to COVID, not realizing that this problem was absolutely worse. COVID exasperated all these issues. Yes, brother. If your fucking leg is broken already, okay, and then you're forced to run on it, you're going to damage it further in comparison to someone who doesn't have a fucking broken leg and is running alongside you. Yes, COVID, COVID made a lot of these other issues worse. Certainly, it was a fucking global pandemic, dumbass. It's funny because I'm a liberal but can realize when I get conned by the government, fake COVID death reporting. Yeah, it sucks that like people who consider themselves to be liberals were so fucking brain broken that they think that like all of these uh, you know, extra deaths were just made up, okay? Thank God we have modern medicine that kept your stupid ass alive regardless of your backwards ass, antiquated ass perspectives. Thank God. You should thank God every fucking day that there are doctors out there who, in spite of your refusal to listen to them, will still save your stupid ass when you are stuck, Okay? Thousands were people with many comorbidities and other issues, but it's not because of COVID. Yeah, it's so weird because those people still had those comorbidities in in a country where, you know, we are riddled with comorbidities. I wonder why we have so many issues with our health, by the way. wonder why our, uh, you know, our life expectancy is like lower than other nations uh, in the uh, other OECD nations. Let's not even think about that further. Even fucking Cuba has uh, lapped us on life expectancy despite the fucking unjustifiable blockade. Um, but yeah, Fauci and liberals should have said this during COVID. We don't know the true effects, but we know it affects the respiratory system. Stay healthy, take vitamins, exercise, eat healthy. Yeah, famously, that's actually what the Fauci, uh, uh, the liberals and the Fauci uh, governance 
the Fauci mandate dictated was don't fucking stay healthy. Don't eat vitamins. Actually, we hate that. Eat bad food and be deeply, deeply fucking uh, unhealthy. That's what they always said. Instead, they said, wait in your house with the vaccine because that's what my pharma buddy says. the only situation. Oh, God. They didn't say that law. They closed all the parks. Law, of course, they did not want people to fucking gather in areas. Also, you act like healthy, fit people didn't get fucking owned by COVID too. They certainly did. It doesn't matter. And the idea that you, as a silly Billy, think that you can get a handle on on uh, a global pandemic better than fucking epidemiologists and better than healthcare professionals is so stupid. But unfortunately. We have to do that in the United States of America because every single American is a fucking baboon brain dipshit who thinks their opinion, just like a fucking snowflake is unique, must be respected because after all, they are exceptional, okay? I'm an American, I'm exceptional, you have to listen to what I'm saying even though I have no fucking clue what I'm saying. I watched a couple fucking Facebook, I watched a couple uh, Joe Rogan videos and other videos. I I read a couple things on Facebook and it totally blew my mind. I felt like I found access to this new trove, this treasure trove of information that nobody's in on. And now you have to sit here and fucking duke it out when there are real medical professionals trying to handle the situation as best as they possibly can with limited information at the time does it have to be 100 correct it's not going to be 100 correct okay it's never going to be 100 correct they have to maintain the best safety standards they possibly can maintain because their goal is to ensure the maximum amount of people surviving a global pandemic no, plenty of doctors did not say what they're doing is wrong. You got to read the real Dr. Fauci book by Robert Kennedy Jr. Yeah, let's listen to the guy who injected black foster children in New York City with random experimental drugs. You're brainwashed plenty of doctors. No, they weren't. You're talking about a bunch of fucking charlatan anti-vaxxers who have always existed. Shut the fuck up. God damn, my man said read Jeffrey Epstein's butt buddy fucking Robert F.K. Jenny, uh, Robert uh, Kennedy Jr., Mr. Fucking, I love uh, going on fossil hunts with uh, with Gislaine Maxwell. Shut the fuck up. Get the fuck out of here, dude. I love this guy literally being like, yeah, RFK Jr. is is actually anti-deep state. Mr. I have all of the exact same positions as Joe Biden on Israel, on every other issue for the Democratic Party, with the exception of vaccines. You're just a fucking anti-vaxxer delusional freak at that point, brother. I'm sorry, okay? It's crazy. RFK Jr. is J is basically a regular old Democrat. Maybe even a little bit more on the conservative side, especially because he thinks capitalism will be able to fix the problems with the global environmental collapse caused by anthropogenic climate change. But, like, beyond that, the only thing that is different is that he's just anti-vaxxer. That's it. He's just an anti-vaxxer. He's a regular old Democrat who's anti-vaxxer. That's all it took for you. A drug that couldn't clear FDA approval except for emergency use. Oh, my fucking Lord, dude. Uh, yeah, RFK Jr., I am so silenced, even though I go on TV shows all the time and also beyond that wrote a book. Yeah, RFK Jr., who also said Ashkenazi Jews and the Chinese created the COVID pandemic specifically to avoid killing the Ashkenazi Jews and the Chinese. I'm Robert F. Kennedy Jr. That's the guy. You you like that guy whose brain is so fucking broken. A dude who dedicated his entire life to fucking fighting against like uh uh fighting against ironically uh, uh the the worst polluters whose brain got fucking polluted somehow and became like the worst anti-vaxxer of all goddamn time rfk jr was like friends with sam cedar okay rfk jr defended indigenous populations against like global polluters he has dedicated a big chunk of his life to doing activism against climate change and now he runs around talks about how capitalism is going to save us from anthropogenic climate change and also if you take the vaccine you will turn gay and autistic okay insane why didn't the deep state change the FDA decision then? I don't get it. Do we have a deep state or not? Yeah. Coworkers with Sam, not friends. True. They were coworkers. But he, I mean, he knew him. He knew him well. It's so funny to think that 
Uh, 98% of doctors were pro taking the COVID vaccine. And these guys literally look at like the 2% that I guess were kooks in that circumstance and go, no, these are the real thinkers. It wasn't even 98. It was like almost 100% by the end of it. But hey, man, I found a chiropractor that told me the COVID vaccine actually gives me shakes. Anyway, how many doctors are being paid by a farmer to say that? If they don't say this stuff, they lose their jobs, etc. Brother, you are insane. I'm sorry, okay? You are crazy. I don't know what to tell you. You're talking about, you're talking about millions of medical professionals globally, okay? This, here's the problem with a lot of these conspiracies, okay? There is a level of, there, there, there is a, like, it's like a finite amount of people that you can keep up a conspiracy with, okay? You cannot motivate people across the planet to do something that is that sinister without, without like real revelations, okay? You just can't do that. There is not a thing that you can do. You, you can engage in conspiracies and some conspiracy theories I like to talk about as well. There's a, obviously my favorite one being Jeffrey Epstein. We talked about it uh, quite a bit with Brace Belden yesterday, right? I do not believe that Jeffrey Epstein killed himself. And I do believe that Jeffrey Epstein most likely was an intelligence asset, okay? There are plenty of conspiracies, like conspiracy in the regular term, conspire, okay? That do happen, especially within our intelligence community, 1,000%, okay? But the idea that uh, there is this genuine deep state that uh, operated in unison and collaborated with every fucking global, every country on the planet where every medical professional on the planet almost universally was in support of a fucking vaccine is insane, a vaccine that is supposed to kill people, which it never fucking did, by the way. We're all supposed to die, right? We were going to die any moment now. And then they kept pushing it. They kept pushing the buck back. Remember when all these motherfuckers were like, yeah, by the way, if you got the vaccine, you're going to die. I'm so sorry. Any moment now, everyone's supposed to die. So much so that people were like doing the died suddenly meta, right? All the fucking externalities, all of the additional deaths that the CDC tracked, that's all fake. But also, someone who uh, plays high school sports died. That's real. That's because of the vaccine. We got it. Now nah, we die in three to five to ten years of heart complications now? Yeah, exactly. We die in five to ten years of heart complications now. And, and by the way, not in a number that is like unimaginably high. Half of the fucking people also literally had COVID, which demonstrably causes uh, palpitations and things of that nature. Uh, uh, amongst people who did get it. But yeah, it must be the vaccines that is causing people to die, even though so many people got vaccinated and they're not dying. Oh, just look at what the insurance companies are saying about the deaths. Are they lying too? Wait, what? Are insurance companies lying about what? Insurance companies are motivated to make money. They won't like uh, reveal information that's incorrect. Anyway, why are there so many anti-vax chatters still? Because when I don't think about something... If RFK was such a liar and could absolutely roast Fauci for so long, there would be a defamation lawsuit. Brother, RFK quite literally was pulled up in front of Congress by Republicans. At RFK himself is a deeply unserious person. He said he never told anyone not to take the vaccine when there was like clear-cut evidence that he did. Also, defamation in America doesn't work that way. That's half the fucking reason why so many dumb motherfuckers online can get away with just like, literally speaking out of their ass and saying that I'm a, a, a sex trafficker of children or whatever the fuck, okay? Because I'm a fucking public figure, okay? So it doesn't work that way at all. You can't just, like, successfully sue someone for defamation with ease like that. A Hearts of Iron 4 streamer mentioned you in a positive way, Lamau. What? Think about all the urban development, Dankus. We're gonna, our people will have access to cheap... Transportation. We're gonna have high-speed rail flying around. Our oh, people are gonna like be liberated. On are you? Is that you? China. Hey, Bo, can you start getting to work using? on your section, Bo? Rolling the zone video. Wait, is this guy larping as a Nazi? This is crazy, dude. Hearts of Iron Four communities are wild, brother. Ninety percent of Hearts of Iron Four players are closet fascists. That's not true. 
There's only two genders in the Hearts of Iron world. Trans or Nazi. Okay? That's it. 100% autism, though. Like, doesn't matter. Anyway. Uh, where was I? Not true. I played socialist route for Mexico and liberated the Americas. Nice. Yeah, the parameters of, of uh, conspiracy theories is the mathematical formula... Uh, the mathematical formula that shows why large-scale conspiracies are quickly exposed. There's obviously a very large limitation of people you can uh, you can use in a conspiracy. Like, that's why... And this obviously goes beyond, like, capitalism, right? Capitalism is not necessarily a conspiracy. It's just our, our uh, current mode of existence, our, our method of, of producing, com uh, producing commodities... And that's how the global economy works. And therefore, it's not treated like a conspiracy. It's just simply how things are. And that's how, uh, that's the reason why, like, we don't treat the Davos Summit or G10 as this, like, secret society of global leaders coming together with capital owners to decide what the fuck to do in the upcoming years. Even though some people try to look at the more liberal side of, like, the World Economic Forum, not recognize it as a continuation of capitalism, but instead as some secret, scary thing where they're trying to implement socialism. But as far as, like, Project Manhattan, CIA, real budget, ironic because you mentioned a conspiracy theory or a conspiracy that is no longer a conspiracy. Like, what, what do you mean? You just, you literally brought up something that has been revealed. That's so funny that you just said... Large-scale conspiracies inevitably fail because someone reveals them by talking about a fucking thing that was revealed to be a reality. That's the whole point, yes. And let me tell you, okay, the movie Alpha is literally about the Manhattan Project. Yeah, the, the hilarious part about this is that, like, the hilarious part about this is that the reason why the moon landing could not have been staged is because there were 410,000 people involved, okay? Like, if you just simply look at the amount of people that uh, would be uh, involved in, like, uh, maintaining a conspiracy theories like this, it would be impossible. It would be impossible to keep it a secret. And the, the strangest part about this is that, like, it hasn't changed. Like, the, the anti-vaxxer conspiracies have always been the same. They've always been profoundly damaging the public health. They have, uh, the methods have not changed as far as like uh, disseminating this kind of misinformation. But as uh, economic instability worsens, or in times of genuine economic instability, like a global fucking pandemic, you get more and more people to sign off on this dumbass idea. Fuck me, dude. But they're talking about yeah, not yeah, having yeah. voter ID. But you have to, like, what do you think that they were talking about it in New York? They were going to try to make citizen? it so that you weren't a, if you weren't a citizen, you could still vote in New York. Interesting. That was something that was discussed, right? I don't know because my dad Google can't that vote. thing about New York. I think it was discussed, but I don't know that's like attempts a to have. Anyway, the most important thing to understand is if the Chicago residents also got that Rogan would also hate it and consider buying a votes. It's funny. I think Stav is about Four. as good as anyone I've seen disagree with Rogan using the tone of agreement. Rogan was on his pandemic made workers lazy shit again. Nature, man. And I think the thing, yeah, I think the, I prefer what you're saying is like, yeah, let's get, let's, let's cover our bases, which we don't do right now. Right. And I think the thing that, I think just as likely for, if you give somebody free money, they're not going to do shit. We're fucking trapped in this opposite thing where it's like, people have to fucking work hard as shit to barely make it. Yeah. Where it's like that zapping all that human potential too, because those people are just surviving at shit. That they don't have time to fucking, because they just have to make rent. Fucking everything right. is more expensive. Right. You don't have any time to fucking. And I. This is another great point. If the vaccine was going to kill us all and the rich or the elites were doing it intentionally, then why were the rich and the elites among the first to get vaccinated? Remember all those stories about rich people trying to buy their way to the front of the line? Yes, exactly. But don't fucking... A no, don't ask that to the, the, the dumb motherfucker whose life is shit, who thinks that he's in on a fucking conspiracy. Okay? It's so stupid. Guys like the anti-vax shatter show up here to be annoying because they have worn everyone else's patience thin being this way for damn near four years type of guy that makes you start eating lunch in your car at work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like, they got to go somewhere. They've been profoundly fucking annoying. They've lost all their friends and family. Their only fucking way, their only way of like 
feeling alive at this point is basically duking it out with motherfuckers and trying to get them to trying to get them to listen to what they have to say. Like they're speaking the fucking truth when no one has died. Why does it trigger you so much though, Hassan? Why does dumb shit trigger me so much? That's a silly question. Reactionary policies that lead to people uh, unironically promoting idiotic, wrong uh, uh, pieces of misinformation that damage uh, public health initiatives is always going to be something that I fight back against. I mean, I argue against people for way sillier shit than this. It's so dumb. I, I want to bring people back to... I want to bring people back to reality desperately. That is why I talk about this kind of thing all the goddamn time. Because I don't want those people to be like fucking psychopathic losers who fall deeper and deeper into the pit of, of conspiracy. Well, it is true. You're so stunlocked. That's why I said you're trying to make a shitty point. Shadows are dumb as fuck. Oh, got it, dude. You're fucking so enlightened uh, that you're now saying that it's because the chatters are stupid that I'm making a shitty point. That's what it is. I'm far from being a conspiracy theorist, but something we can actually agree on is that the vaccine resulted in serious side effects. Wow, fucking. I'm done. I'm done reading fucking vaccine shit. Let's let's move on. We're I'm done. I'm not like even fucking megaphonics is trying to fucking get my attention here. We're moving away from the vaccine shit. Okay? And we're talking about Stavros, Stavi baby. I do agree with you that kind of the middle ground is get their basic needs met and then let them be able to work but not have to fucking work, you know, 60 hours a week or whatever the right. fuck or work 40 hours but it's grueling for less pay like cuz you do need that time you need that space to I, I think if you're you want to get correct. ahead and you want to figure your own path in life you got to have some time yeah it's yeah. going to either cut into your sleep or it's yeah. going to cut into your social life it's going to kind of like but you're going to need some time totally and that's the one benefit for a motivated person for universal basic income right but my f feeling was when i watched everybody during the pandemic when they were all getting Unemployment. How many people didn't want to go back to work? They just wanted that free money. I was like, yeah. ooh, this is wild. I mean, but some of that also is that they were like, because my friends were like, what the fuck? This is like the, ba like, I'm making less money working hard as fuck on what unemployment pays. Like, this is what the government thinks you barely need to subsist. And when I go back to work, I make less than this. Mm -hmm. And I work fucking hard as shit. I mean, it's also a problem of like, I think people also saw in that moment how mistreated they were being and how underpaid they were being a lot of the time mm. where it's like this low pay which it wasn't that much money right well they started ramping up pay at a lot of places after the pandemic yeah, yeah. they ramped up pay everywhere like they advertise like high pay like places right. like mcdonald's yeah 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 like what does mcdonald's pay now i think it pays like 18 dollars an hour nature man one of the funniest parts about this conversation that people always bring up for some reason is like and and liberals do this on twitter a lot is that Oh, well, a lot of leftists claim that, like, higher wages uh, would bring uh, higher, uh, would bring about inflation, right? And yet they seemingly hate it now that inflation is upon us. And it's like, first of all, brother, what fucking, what are you talking about? Like, the inflation predated the higher wages, dumbass. What the fuck are you talking about? And Joe Rogan is an absolute moron for for perpetuating this fucking uh, perpetuating this fucking stupid ass take too. I guess you know this should make the the Twitter liberals who love capitalism and love dunking on the left or whatever really reconsider their position when like Joe Rogan is saying the same exact shit that they're saying. Great, good stuff. I love that this guy started out by saying Joe Rogan is not a conservative, by the way. It's like believing the top of the hour ad break is actually just a myth. That's how silly that shit is. Joe Rogan 100% has a shit ton of uh, conservative beliefs, okay? He always has, and he's certainly gotten way, way, way worse, okay? The ad break is not a myth. It's real. It's very real, and you will see it unless you subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. 34 MKD 50. Thank you for the 50. Get the subs. Allowing 50 people to no longer believe in the myth of the top of the hour ad break. Here's the three minute ad break now. Um, so yeah. Man. And
If this was true Machiavellian stuff and not just Chicago Dems wanting some place for migrants besides O'Hare in the streets, maybe the GOP could use some info to win elections by housing some migrants in their oh, communities. Dude. Exactly, dude. They actually practice when no one's around. <laughs> a fine artist? Like, I respect them more than fucking comedy. And I love that, though. I think it should be the low... I like that we're the lowest form of show business. Yeah, it's good. We're fucking idiots. I mean, yeah. we are dumb as fuck. We have, like, a type... Some of us have a type of intelligence. Or, like... Like, I think my what I like is... Emp like... Emotional intelligence. I can pick up on people, but mm -hmm. I'm not fucking reading books anymore. Most of like, my mind, my, my, I think my brain is essentially like uh, a tachometer. Uh huh. Like, I can redline that bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, if I have scientists in and I have to have discussions with right. them, or if there's something serious that I have to d debate about with someone, I can redline it. Yeah. But for the most part, I'm cruising on the highway at a steady 2,500 RPMs. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm a golf cart. I'm just going <laughs> fucking, like, hey guys, how we doing? Let me tell you about what time my dick didn't get hard. He means he fucking regurgitates Facebook memes that he has in his fucking meme folder, by the way. Everybody wants to feel smart. It's a perfectly understandable thing, okay? People want to feel smart. People want to feel like they're in on something that other people are not in on. And this creates this, like, weird cycle. I mean, plenty of you guys do the same thing. I do it as well. But plenty of you guys are doing it literally right now. Like, you listen to what I have to say, and then instead of doing your own reading further, instead of investigating it on your own, which I do always recommend, you oftentimes, you oftentimes just, like, regurgitate what I've said, and maybe you didn't even fully understand <laughs> what I had said. And then someone will like come in and own you or whatever with their talking points. And then, and then uh, obviously like it doesn't feel good, but that is, you know, you got to do, you got to do more uh, investigating beyond what I'm saying, bro, please. You're not smart. I've never said that I am smart. You just swag nasty. Thank you for the five. Get the subs. I don't know why you're shut up. Dumbass. You, you, why are you such a, we literally unbanned you after like two years and like your first fucking you have non-stop non-stop been fucking trolling i've never said i'm a smart person yeah but when you explain stuff is in detail for the most part but yeah anyway my my point was a lot of people want to seem smart and it's a it's kind of the easy route to just like look at memes that describe something to you it's a super easy way for you to feel like you fast-tracked uh, intelligence because it takes a long time to, like, deeply research and investigate something. Is argumentation the best way to go about it, though? I feel like we need to meet these people on a human level so they're likely struggling as well. What? I, I do try to do that. I constantly say the opposite. In fact, that I hate it because it makes me feel stupid. <sighs> anyway, my point is, that's why Joe Rogan thinks, like, oh, I'm redlining information by just, like, reading a fucking meme that corresponds to my biases. And uh, it makes me feel good when this meme is agreeing with me.